Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I I really wanna know, really wanna know If I Will ever figure out where the road goes Even if I'm falling down I will keep on searching for my highs Say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling Hey friends, welcome back and welcome if you're new. I am so excited to dive into this master bedroom makeover with you guys today. We're tackling some DIYs and decorating and I cannot wait to share. As you can see, here are just a few before clips. We had a lot of gray going on in here. So I'm starting off this project by taping off the trim and the windows and then we're gonna get painting. If you happen to be new, first of all, welcome. I'm so glad that you stopped by. But I also wanted to mention that we live in a home that's over 100 years old. And with that comes small bedrooms and some quirky layouts. This bedroom is gorgeous. It gets so much natural light all day long because there are three windows on three of the walls, um, but they're not all centered and the layout is just a little bit different. And so designing this bedroom was a little tricky, but I'm so excited to share and reveal that final look with you guys here in a little bit. So make sure you stay tuned. I did my best to film as I went. This took about a week to do, at least the DIY portions with the painting and the board and batten that you'll see here soon. We ended up painting the walls Alabaster by Sherwin Williams. This is a beautiful creamy white color. Against dark white, it leans a little more warm and I love that because it's bright and airy, but it's nice and cozy and soft. I don't like anything too cool toned. I really wanted the space to feel warm and inviting. So this was the perfect color. Because I'm a busy mama of three, I just painted whenever I found the time. This took me several days to complete, and I wanted to just say that I did end up doing two coats of alabaster. Even on that darker wall behind me there, you can see it only used two coats as well. And that cabinet behind me is original to the house, so we decided to keep it. I just ended up taking off the door, and you'll see here in a little bit, I end up decorating it like I would bookshelves. Now it's the next day and Caleb is tackling some board and batten for me. I really wanted a focal point here in the bedroom and I wanted to do this board and batten a little bit higher up on the window because the headboard is also going on this wall. So I wanted it to really be a statement. Now Caleb is using one by fours and he is just cutting them to size both horizontally and vertically and brad nailing them into the studs. I know DIY projects like this can seem a little bit scary if you don't have experience, but Caleb and I don't have a ton of experience in this department. We are just kind of learning as we go, taking it one project at a time. And this is just such an affordable way to add character to a space, so I definitely recommend it. And I'll leave some tutorials we use down in the description below. Now it was time to determine the spacing of the vertical boards and we played around with this for a while and we kind of just ended up eyeballing it because the window wasn't centered on the wall. Again, old house problems, but we ended up doing something around five inches apart and we also did a one by three shelf on top. 
And again, it is the next day. I think this was on a Saturday morning. I can definitely sense some morning light in here. And it was time to paint our board and batten so that it looks seamless and all one piece. Now, the beauty of this project in particular is that we didn't have to do any hardboard. We were able to just paint right onto the wall because this wall didn't have any texture. If you have a textured wall, you might have to do hardboard or something like that behind those board and batten boards. But in this case, all I had to do was paint. And I ended up doing two coats of Extra White by Sherwin-Williams. If you guys know me, then you know my style is a little bit of a hybrid. Yes, I love farmhouse, but I also love more of that cozy cottage feel. And a board and batten is really transitional. You can do a lot of styles with it. It is very timeless in my opinion. It doesn't look super trendy. It just is a beautiful built-in look that adds character. And that is why I have been loving adding it to the spaces in our home. Our home is a very old and we want to cherish it. We don't want to do anything too trendy in here. And because this bedroom is so small, I didn't want to make this space look even more cluttered. I love the bright white in here. It adds such a cheery feel and it was just a really simple way to make it look like this room was a little more expensive a little more of a built-in custom look all of the trim in here is original so I wanted to make sure I took good care of it by taping everything off this takes so much time, but it is well worth it. It makes the painting fly by if you do it right. And we would love to add crown molding to this space eventually. That didn't happen in this phase of the makeover, but eventually we would love to do that too. This was filmed on a beautiful spring morning and the sun was shining. I had the windows open and even just watching this footage back makes my heart happy. There is just something about doing what I love in my most favorite place in the entire world, my home, and making it my own and putting my own touch on it is just such a blessing and something I don't take for granted. I have been loving decorating these spaces and doing these makeovers. So if you're new, make sure you go check out my playlist. I have our original home tour on there with all the befores, the office makeover, soon to be kitchen makeover and it's just a lot of fun so make sure you hit that red subscribe button down below if you are new here today and check out those videos and now for a little YouTube magic we're gonna go from this to this I love this beautiful black chandelier from Wayfair it was super affordable. I'll link it down below as well as anything else I can find from this video today. So make sure you check out the description first if you're looking for a link to something. And if it's not there, feel free to leave a comment down below. And now the most satisfying part of any paint project, removing the tape. That is such a good feeling knowing that painting is all done and we can move on. Now, Caleb is going to remove the blinds that were in the house when we purchased them. They're obviously not original to the house, but they're just kind of your standard blinds and I wanted more of a bamboo woven look. I actually found these on Amazon and they were super affordable compared to um, other woven blinds I had found online, so I'll definitely link that in my Amazon storefront. And then we're just taking these black curtain rods. I actually got these at our local grocery store, um, but if I find something similar, I'll link it on Amazon too. So a huge decision that we made was to put the bed centered on this window. And because we were doing that, and this window was rather narrow compared to our bed, I really wanted to hang 
the curtain rod really high and really wide to make the window look and feel bigger. Now I didn't want to lose any of that natural light so I'm using these little clips and I'm using very very sheer white curtains. I found these on Amazon. They were super affordable. I'll link them as well and these are just really airy. They make the window look bigger. They do their job but they're very sheer so you don't lose any light. And now I get to start my favorite part of every big home project, decorating day. I'm starting here with our Ikea dresser that we have had for years. And I decided because we have a black headboard, which I forgot to say that is from Wayfair. We got it just before we moved. I'll show it here in a minute. But we had a black headboard, black chandelier, and so I decided with this hardware, we really needed to change it up and just kind of break it up. So I ended up going with a gold knob, and these were really soft and really pretty, and I found them at Lowe's. If you wanna give a piece of furniture or a room a refresh, a great way to do that is just simply change the hardware. You can totally transform a piece on a budget this way, and it really does make such a statement once it's all done. I really wish I had done this sooner. We were in a hurry when we were hanging up the curtains and they were a little disheveled. So I just wanted to make sure they were all even and put together. That's why I'm standing up here on the bed, just kind of fixing them and making them perfect. And now I'm going to move the bed and I tried to do this myself, but then I had to wrangle up my husband and recruit him to help me. But I opened up this new rug. I got it from Boutique Rugs and it is a jute rug and I love the fringe. It's a really light color, which is really pretty against our darker floors. And what I'm going to do is just kind of center this under the window. I wanted this going horizontally so that you could see it with the bed over it. And so Caleb and I are just gonna move it around until we get it right. There is a chain based out of Cincinnati called Burlap and Birch, and they have the cutest decor. I found this sign. It is over four feet tall. It is massive, and it has Philippians 4, 6 through 8 on it, which happens to be one of my favorite verses. So it was a perfect piece of art here in the bedroom. And now we're going to focus on the bed again, and I'm just going to take the matches off and the reason I'm doing that is because I want to add the bed skirt. I put the bed skirt, the sheets, the duvet, the quilt, everything through the wash today with lavender detergent so that it smelled really fresh and clean. And so I'm just going to slowly but surely make this bed throughout the video. I'm just kind of rolling loads of laundry as this filming is going on. So we'll make the bed in parts today. I found these round end tables on Wayfair and they are the perfect size. They're not too small, not too big, and the warmth that they bring to this space is beautiful. And now I'm gonna add the sheets onto the bed. I'm probably gonna get questions about this, so I just wanted to say I always buy the threshold sheets from Target. They are my tried and true, and I love having white because you can just throw them in a cycle with bleach and they always come out sparkling clean. We used this dresser top a lot during our project, so I wanted to make sure it was nice and clean before I decorated it today. I'm just using the Mrs. Myers all-purpose spray in the lavender scent. 
Now you may recall this vintage mirror that I found at an antique shop a few weeks back for my office. Well, I moved it up here because this is the perfect home for it. I love how it looks in this space. It adds such a pretty vintage element. And then I'm taking this wooden vase from Birch and Burlap and adding some pretty spring florals. They're from Hobby Lobby. And then I wanted to keep things really simple. I have this pineapple vanilla sugar candle. Oh my word. It smells so good. And I just added that to the top of a book stack. And now I'm taking these lamps that I actually found at Lowe's. I really wanted to find lamps that were tall and skinny so that they fit on the table and added lots of height to the space. And that way I could still add some decor underneath so that it wasn't too cluttered. I wanted to make sure the lampshade was nice and high. I have a slight obsession with white pictures. I'm always collecting them from antique shops or home goods, wherever I can find them because they're such a pretty way to display greeneries and florals. And it is amazing what this floral arrangement did to the space. I mean, it truly brought this bedroom to life. There is nothing like spring and fresh flowers or even faux flowers to make the room just feel fresh and bright and airy. One piece of advice I have for you if you're decorating a small table and table tray, decorate an odd number. So in this case, I would either do one or three items. And I chose to do three items since I had that picture of florals. I just added the stack of books. And I find that odd numbers are much more appealing to the eye. Now I'm adding this charcoal chair. I found this at Kirkland's and it was on sale. And I thought this was the perfect space for just a small sitting area. I didn't end up adding a table or anything to it, at least not yet. It's a very simplistic, but I really like it that way. It lets the room breathe. And now I'm just decorating those little knickknacks I was talking about earlier with this built-in cubby. And I mean, I'll probably change this a million times, but for now, I'm just adding some books. I would love to get some more old books, but for now, it looks great. And now the bedding is finally clean, so I can officially finish off by making the bed. This white quilt is from Target, and it is super affordable. And again, I love having white because it's really easy to keep clean. I've shared this bedding over on Instagram, which if you're not following me over there, make sure you go follow me. My handle is at amy.fritz. But this duvet in the shams came from Pottery Barn Teen, and it is so pretty. It actually matches the charcoal chair perfectly, and I wasn't even... Um, I didn't even have that in mind when I bought the chair, so I was really excited about that. It really just tied everything all together. I love to have this duvet at the end of the bed. I think it just makes the bedding look so much more luxurious, and it is really pretty. And on cold nights, we can unfold it, and we have an extra blanket, which is great, too. And I'm just adding one final touch and then I'm going to spray the linens with the Caldrea Sea Salt Neroli Spray. This stuff smells amazing. 
And here is that quick look at the before and here is after our perfect farmhouse bedroom makeover. We could not be happier with how this transformation turned out. I love it. This truly is our sanctuary. It's our tiny little oasis from the world. You'd never guess that this was a cramped tiny bedroom before we were able to make it feel spacious and inviting and we are just so happy with how it turned out. I hope that today's video brought you lots of farmhouse decorating ideas and inspiration. I hope that it was a bright and cheery spot in your day, and I hope you're doing well, staying safe, staying healthy wherever you are, and I'll see you really soon in the next one. Bye guys.